What's our love taglines? <laughs> really? You do? Yeah. He's talking. He's talking. Shut up, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm sorry, Bonzo. I, I have no taglines for you. Bonzo's gonna hang himself. <laughs> <laughs> with that rope when he yeah. gets out of jail yeah. <laughs> uh yeah i got no taglines i got nothing oh. i got no reported gross i got no reported budget good <laughs> <laughs> i've got so very little when it comes to this film and information except for the entire company that made it so i do have stats though you ready for them Bonzo wants the stats. <laughs> it's just as creepy as it is in the movie. Yes, it's horrible. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I got one little man in a monkey suit, bicycle-powered dentistry drilling, multiple incidents of monkey chaos, scorpion attacks, food fights, gratuitous circus performances, and monkeys driving cars and flying airplanes with a 2.7 on IMDb and a 2.3 on Letterboxd. It's 1987's Going Bananas. Let's drop some bombs. Bombs alarm, bombs. And hot dumplings. You want some onion down that? We got the onion, but they don't smell right. This is great. The old bastard has blown a fuse in the middle of a thermal, and we're gonna roast. I'd like you to meet Bimbo Cup. I showed ya! April Fool! April fucking Fool, you mother sucker! My mom's a werewolf. You come barging in here, interrupt what might have been the most important phone call of my life, and tell me that your mom's a werewolf? I mean, my mother's a real honest to goodness werewolf. Big deal. My mother's a cow. Welcome to Bombs Away, the B-movie comedy podcast. My name is Jonathan Young. Joining me over there in that foreign continent, as always, is... <laughs> Tyler O. <laughs> <laughs> At least you didn't do the monkey voice again. I hate that monkey. That, I, I wanted to whoop on this. Uh, <laughs> Actually, you know what? Let's just let's just stop right here. Okay. This movie very incorrectly constantly calls Bonzo a monkey, and I'm here to drop the knowledge that chimpanzees are not monkeys. They Thank are you. apes. Thank you. <laughs> yes. The whole movie they're like, that monkey. <laughs> chimpanzees are praising you all around the world right now for being Thank politically you. correct. Thank chimpanzees you. are scary as book yeah I, I can see why they used a man in a suit <laughs> so i um i was watching this uh with a, uh, a friend and uh basically she turns to me and she goes what's wrong with his butt <laughs> that's what dude that's what their butts look like i had i had to go you know what actually that's the most accurate part of this entire movie let me show you <laughs> yeah and, and you google chimpanzee bottom and yeah it's they a, have prolapsed a, anuses all the time just a blown out asshole <laughs> it's so gross <laughs> Uh, all I could think of, like, this entire movie was was two things. Uh, one, uh, a thing that used to make my coworker laugh all the time, which is a horrible, horrible story. But, um, you know, chimpanzees are, like, incredibly dangerous. Um, there was one story of an African village where a chimpanzee came in and wreaked havoc and ripped a child's lips off of his face, like, with its bare hands. I, isn't that very close to the story about the woman that owned one here in and, california and here in california <laughs> a woman who had one as a pet and i i implore anyone listening i'm listen i'm not trying to laugh about this because it's not funny it's actually horrific if you listen to it but you can find the 911 call on youtube of that woman whose face was eaten by her pet chimpanzee and it is as shocking as it is slightly hilarious to hear in the background everything that's happening because it's her neighbor who called the cops mm -hmm. and her neighbor's like, you guys got to get here quick. He's eating her face. 
and you can hear the monkey in the background like <laughs> like coming from like somewhere and then you can hear the cops shoot the monkey oh <laughs> it's so sad i was i was gonna say well why don't we just play it and then like you're like shoot the monkey and i'm like yeah no you guys yeah. go ahead and find it on go your find own it yourself uh, it's it's horrible <laughs> but yes chimpanzees are are very scary i can see why they used obviously it's gonna talk they used you know a, an actor in a suit okay um, though okay here we go stop right there we're gonna I'm, I, I'm gonna set it up right so guys going bananas is made from canon uh Who's canon? Well, we've talked about them before on the show. They're the ones who made Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Uh, they made New Year's Evil, all past episodes, and more, I'm sure, that I can't remember right now. Uh, so if you're interested in more of the life of canon and, and how they came to be and how we got to this point, 1987, with Going Bananas, uh, I definitely urge you to check out those episodes, and then we're going to have a future episode coming up uh, shortly where we're going to just go into the full library of canon just for an hour, you know, just shooting the shit, talking about how crazy this company was. But uh, real quick, they... They were two Israeli producers who, and directors who came to America, and th their MO was that they would sell a film before they made the film. They would draw a poster, and they would get distributors to buy the film, and then six months later, they would come out with something real quick, uh, usually something like Going Bananas, uh, which is a ripoff of other things that are well known in mainstream uh and and this is no exception and that's and that's six months mind you from conception to release mm -hmm. that's not like six months of shooting which would be you know a long time but a kind of an on average time frame we're talking from the point of the initial concept to the screenwriting to everything six months till it's out the door and that's going to be extremely important for the end of this episode guys so definitely stay until the end until we at least until we start talking you know promoting you know next week or whatever don't touch that dial because i've got something crazy for you tyler and i'm gonna save it into the end okay oh ooh, i'm excited all right so yes it, just keep that guys in the back of your head that this is how canon did business now speaking of um spending as little money as possible on making a movie <laughs> How fucking shocked were you to find out that this movie was actually filmed in Africa? <laughs> wait, wait, what? Yes. <laughs> oh, so you didn't know. I did not. Where did you find that piece of information? On IMDb, this film was made in South Africa, Kenya, and Zimbabwe. It was actually filmed on location in Africa. Okay, because I had a question uh, where I went... No, it was not filmed at Disney's Animal Kingdom no. on the Kilimanjaro <laughs> Safari ride. I, like, I do know that other safaris exist, but there was a legitimate question when we get to the safari park where I went... Does the safari have safari parks? <laughs> like, uh, kind of like uh, reserves are what they're called. I don't know why the movie called them safari parks. Yeah. But there is animal <laughs> reserves that are protected chunks of land where animals walk around. And <laughs> it's the easiest way you're going to see animals. Yeah, it's weird. It's, it, it's like going to America's part of Epcot. <laughs> uh or no even worse just california adventure yeah, <laughs> when it was yeah. first open um yeah I, I was just like wait i i that was a thing that i i guess that you're saying that that does exist because yes there is a uh, safari park is one of our main settings in this film yeah uh so we're introduced to benjamin mcnamara benjamin mcnamara is the son of a senator uh from the united states and that's and all you need to know <laughs> that's, but that's literally that's all they give you about him being the son of a senator it's like yeah he's the son of the senator anyway <laughs> keep on moving <laughs> senator won't be here for this movie though yeah um, so this is played by david mendenhall who also starred in Over the Top, the Ar the not Arnold, the Sylvester Stallone arm wrestling movie uh, that Cannon also directed, uh, oh, produced, and directed. 
Uh, and then we're also introduced in this time uh, to Big Bad Joe Hopkins, which is played by Dom DeLuise. Yes, Dom DeLuise. I was, I don't know why I was so dumb about who he is and not realizing that he's just a mainstay of Mel Brooks. It's everything Mel Brooks. Absolutely. Julius because like, he Caesar. Plays, he um, played some characters who I knowing unknowingly was or i was unaware that he was playing them like i didn't know he's pizza the hut i don't know why that didn't <laughs> dawn on me and then i was looking at i was like you oh, taste shit. delicious <laughs> <laughs> yeah dom de is great uh, uh let me no tell secret you how much before, i love love him before we move on though i i don't know what it was about the special effects of pizza the hut but I was like, I'd fucking eat him too. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude. Every time I see Pizza the Hut, I get like physically sick to my stomach. Really? Yeah, I mean, it like, grosses that was, me out so much. That was the point. But for some reason, I was like, he looks so cheesy. <laughs> you might be fat if that's the case. <laughs> you know, like Jeff Foxworthy's, you might be a redneck. Yeah. It's like, you might be fat if you want to eat Pizza the Hut. <laughs> <laughs> then call me fat sir <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah he, he he was pizza the hut uh he's one of the main main three in um in silent movie he definitely just continued to be in mel brooks stuff and then another main thing that he like most of our generation and your generation would know is uh all the mgm films he was the voice of for like all dogs go to heaven and yeah. he was the cat in uh american tale and, and so he he had huge voiceover career as well and also i think uh, he also showed up in a fair amount of um, children's Christian films. Oh. Yeah, because uh, I, I have seen him in many uh, Everything is Terrible, like, clip of him, like, telling stories about God and all this kind of stuff. So uh, that's that's a very interesting uh, thing about him as well. In, that that is interesting. I had no idea. I think you wait. You did. You might have showed me a, a clip from Everything Is Terrible in which he definitely uh, he yeah. was telling the story of of Jesus being killed by the Romans. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, he, he is playing Big Bad Joe. Uh, we'll just call him Joe for the rest of this. I, for for some reason, that is his official credited name on IMDb and in the credits. And only uh, Mozambo or Mo, played by Jimmy Walker, who is our safari guide for the film, uh, and our comedic relief in a way as well uh is the only person that calls him mr big bad joe and i'm like only it was like he knew right off the bat he was like this guy's got to be big bad if he's bringing a child sex slave with him on his trip to africa (laughs) (laughs) um (laughs) damn oh please benjamin put put some clothes on you don't know what we were just doing in this room Yes, because that's he just piles out and is overprotective of Benjamin the entire time. But it makes sense a little bit because he is his handler. He is the one who is accompanying him on this trip to Africa for, I'm guessing, his uh, senator father. And I'm going to say father because it's 1987. All I'm saying is if we learned anything from when Sasha Baron Cohen discovered an interesting underground in the in the American government system, it's not a far stretch for what uh you know a big bad joe hopkins might be doing here with this child (laughs) oh no (laughs) (laughs) so they pull up to the shores of uh it's uh tangala yes it's tangala and and i'm not sure if that's i'm gonna call it the city of tangala uh other people have tried to say that it's a made-up country of tangala i Either way, it doesn't matter. No, yeah. But uh, they pull up in a boat called uh, the African Queen, uh, which uh, is is going to be their transportation home when they're done sightseeing. Uh, there's a crazy captain who's like I, he's normal and then goes insane. He he's he's like ah Benjamin, come here while I steer this ship. Mm-hmm. He's like okay, and then he's like all right, now I'm batshit insane. <laughs> yes. like, oh my god, and he's really racist. Yes, because um they're like oh what are you gonna do? And he's like oh we have a guide that's gonna escort us around. And he's like a guide? Well he'll probably eat you. 
<laughs> Whoa. Um, you know, I, I joked early on when we said we were going to do this film about I wonder how much casual racism towards Africans was going to be in this film. I was not anticipating it just really getting right off the bat. Like, it, we got to film, we got to fill the casual racism quota as quick as possible. But you know what? At the exact same time, I was surprised at how little like that it was i thought it was going to be extremely like in your face over the top no i knew it was going to be like children's movie african racism like <laughs> yeah. uh, like jungle to jungle like krippendorf's or, tribe <laughs> <laughs> or like or like um a little bit of like george of the jungle which is uh, it's yeah it's not bad but it's a little overt sometimes but yeah just i knew it was going to have those like kitty racist moments in yeah it. oh for sure um so yeah, the, the the captain's insane. There's another thing where like uh, Mozambo is like, "Are you the captain of this here bucket?" And I just love the line though. He's like, "This is the African Queen, not some bucket. It's a ship, and it's my ship, and you can go to hell." <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> and and it was just like, okay, that escalated very quickly. So uh, Carly's Carly's exact words in this scene were, "It actually kind of does look like a bucket." I don't know why she was like really caught on the boat did look like a bucket. Uh, so we, yes, we're introduced to Mazambo or um, we're just going to call him Mo. Cause that's what everybody else calls. Uh, and this is, uh, he's played by Jimmy Walker, which, uh, if those of you who do not know Jimmy Walker, uh, I also, I'm kind of unfamiliar with him other than what? Good times and airplane. Okay. Um, are you just reading IMDb? Yeah, you are too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and he was also in Big, I, Big I, Money Hustlers, which I, is the Wild West Juggalo film. <laughs> and The Giver as Striker. No, I did know about Good Times, but I did have to, like, that's why I stalled for a second. And he's in Plump Fiction, coming to a Future Bombs Away episode. And whatever Chaw is. <laughs> but yes, he is, um, he is probably, well, actually, that's not true. There's two characters in this movie who are really giving it their all, and it's it's him and it's Dom DeLuise. Sure. But I also think... Dom DeLuise doing a good job is just because Dom DeLuise always does a good job. Agreed. So I think I think um, he's just a different caliber of of person in this film. He is definitely the odd man out, but uh, Jimmy Walker is killing it. He's he's actually very funny throughout the entire movie. He's is he is exactly what his character needs to be. Uh, because Don Dolly's will be the more physical comedy relief where he he's killing it with his words the, yep. the entire time is everything. Uh, but you know what? I do have to interject and say that um, the person that played, I'll call him villain number one. Captain Macintosh, Nazi Macintosh. I was gonna say, you mean this weird Nazi side plot that's in this movie <laughs> yeah. all of a sudden? Herbert Lom is is that actor, and I will say that uh, if they were like, yes, we want you to be a a stereotype of of like a Nazi in Africa, then he was doing uh, he was doing great too. I yeah. really I I enjoyed him better than. Uh, villain number two, Palermo, which is the circus guy yes, that, that yes, we'll get yes. to. So, uh, yeah, they they go into Mambo Zombo Land Safari Park. <laughs> there is a this is a, a, a he's he's getting everyone in the vehicle and he hands everyone a gun, even oh. the child. Oh, that's right. And then and they drive like, around the city almost hitting people. Yes, I was like, what the fuck is going on in this movie? <laughs> uh, again. It's one of those things of like I want to laugh because until I realized that this is actually filmed in Africa, this isn't a set. I was like, "Damn, Animal Kingdom does be looking good. <laughs> like, it really <laughs> is authentic. It is. It really looks good. It looks like it could be filmed there, which is a, a, an attest a testament to the work that they did there. But um, I mean, there's yeah. no just there's no Coca Cola like uh, painted in a different language up on no, the wall. No. <laughs> But yeah, he gives everyone a gun, including Benjamin. And he's like, where we're going is dangerous. And he goes, this isn't Disneyland, you know. 
And I was like, ah, ah. oh my God, Mo, chill out. <laughs> There's no Trader Sam here, bitch. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, yeah he, he is so excited about the safari park. A safari park that I thought that he owned at first. Well, he kind of made it sound like he did, right. but he doesn't. Not, not at all. No, he is just one of many tour guides that own, uh, you know, buses that can take people into this Mambo Zambo Land Safari Park, and that's when they meet the uh, the security guards. They're like game wardens, which th- Look again, as fuck. <laughs> it, no, but also as if this movie could not hold back on being racist. They were like they pull up to game wardens. Game wardens, keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. And the game wardens have skulls on spears, <laughs> <laughs> like human skulls. And well, the guy we took, is, we took the stormtrooper helmets off. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy is eating an onion. Yes, <laughs> which is the second movie. Uh, well, it's not the second movie in a row, but it is very close to. Uh, here we go. Like is John Saxon going to come in and eat a werewolf? T- uh, I mean, eat a, eat an onion as well. Like, yeah, I, I don't get. And then Dom Deli's like, he's eating a raw onion. <laughs> it's like, okay, okay. Um, uh, thank you for saying that because I actually genuinely couldn't tell from this VHS rip I was watching on YouTube. I do like, I do like that as they go away, he's like, oh my god, your breath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's because Dom DeLuise has such a like this like, like I don't know. He has such good timing on like very. I don't know. It's just his okay. comedy is great. But, I, I just can't but, even describe it. But Dom DeLuise is always just being Dom DeLuise. That is the thing about like, him. Ooh, yes. Ha. Oh. You know. <laughs> he's like. Oh. Oh. Benjamin. Ah. Uh, uh, you know. <laughs> like yeah. that. Just completely standoffish and also like uh, just like oh my god oh no ah. Uh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's he Dom is DeLuise. always Dom DeLuise. Yes. Right. Even in. Hold on. A movie we need to mention, and because it's it's just everybody should actually go out and watch it if you haven't seen it is Dom DeLuise in Haunted Honeymoon with oh with uh, Gene, Gene Wilder. Wilder and and his and his wife uh, Gilda Radner. Uh, yeah, it was like the I think the last film that they did together before she passed. Um, but uh, or no, their first film. No, it's their first film as as a couple. That's right. Sorry, but either way, he's amazing. He's in drag the whole film, but he's yeah, doing the exact that same thing in that film that he does in everything. Oh, ah, ah, my dear! Like he just like <laughs> he has not stopped just doing that act. Like that is his thing, and, but it works. It works for he, this too. He has been in a whole mess of like weird parody movies. Okay, like. The Silence of the Hams. Oh no! <laughs> Where he plays Doctor Animal Animal Cannibal. It's got to be like cameos. No, he is like the main character. Nuh-uh. He's literally on the poster for this movie. Because um, the last Brooks film, I don't. Did you say? Did you see Dracula Dead and Loving It? No, I have not. I really didn't care either. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um so the last thing I remember him in is like playing a Godfather parody in, in the uh, Men in Tights. Oh, and he's also in a movie called The Godson. But yes, he is he is in Men in Tights. Yes, yeah. So that's the last Brooks thing I remember him doing. And and, and uh, but the point being, he's been doing the same thing forever. Uh, yeah. So he's... oh my god, he was the voice of Munchie. Oh. In Munchie, <laughs> you know the the like. I uh, haven't seen it, but I know what you're talking about. Yes. Oh damn, mm-hmm. Dom DeLuise is definitely coming back to the show, guys. <laughs> he, he's gonna be here for a while. <laughs> oh, ah, uh, oh. he's also the talking skateboard in that movie with the kid with the talking skateboard. There's a kid with a talk. Oh, excuse me. A... <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm really taking it back. There's a kid with a talking skateboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's and we it's, haven't done it yet. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's, okay. Uh, yeah, we got. It's called the skateboard kid. 
<laughs> um, I, I, I don't think you're joking either. <laughs> no. Uh, so they they enter this park after after experiencing some uh, racism by the set designers, <laughs> and um, they see more animals than you would ever see on a real safari ever, as if they were on a film shoot or something. That's why I had to say, like, um, yeah, when is Doc Antle going to show up? <laughs> no, he's too busy <laughs> plowing to be there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, all right, guys. Uh, so what you're gonna do? We're gonna film this elephant right here, and it's gonna, we're gonna make it look like that I'm filming the elephant. All right. So like that's where I want you to cut for the cameras, if you can do that. <laughs> um, I, I love that part of that documentary where where they're where like, he's telling them how to film. Oh, yeah, God, and they're like, yes. okay, yeah, sure, and they just left it in. They'll be like, what an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, they seem like I, I, I always, you know, tell people like I've never been on an African safari, but I have a lot of friends who have and I've, I've read a lot about it. It's like you will be lucky to see like you'll see like gazelle and water buffalo because those are a plenty. But like good luck seeing a fucking elephant and a lion. Like, in, I mean, like, I mean, you will if you go to Animal Kingdom. Dog, I've barely seen a fucking lion at Animal Kingdom. Are you kidding me? And I've been, I lived there. Wow. No, <laughs> yeah. man, every time I did th that safari, you know, in the back. Every yeah. time I did that, the lion would be up on the rock exactly where they said it would be. And the elephant would always be grazing around. I would see the elephants, but the lion was always too hard to see. It's always like way fuck up there. And I'm like, all right, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a lion. I've seen a lion at the zoo. Right. Next. <laughs> um, yeah, that's how I learned about monkeys blown out assholes. Is that <laughs> Animal Kingdom. <laughs> uh, and chimpanzees. Sorry. Yes, yes. Chimpanzees, please. So they stop. They see... Um, they see what will be our star monkey here. Uh, he can fly. Uh, straight up leaps in this <laughs> film, man, like a flying squirrel. He, dog, he, not even a flying squirrel. This is super monkey. He literally is like, because he flies 36 feet across two trees in this <laughs> scene in not like a crouch, like a, like a monkey jumps, like literally like arms out flying. All right, guys. So, yes, there are real chimpanzees in this film. No, this is not one of them. <laughs> no. Um, so the history behind this film specifically that, that the Electric Boogaloo documentary goes into is that um, initially – they wanted the film, the film chimpanzees, the, the the ones that were used in the film, uh, any which way but loose, and its sequel, the one with uh, Clint Eastwood. Uh, they literally brought in the chimpanzees <laughs> to to a meeting, and with their uh, managers, you know, their agents, <laughs> and pitched them this movie, and they were like, "Yeah, nah." <laughs> <laughs> As, and they pitched it to the monkeys though they talked to the monkeys like what do you guys think three bananas a day to do this film <laughs> and they like turn they're like that's fucking that's rude i that this uh, this offer is bullshit <laughs> i'm not dumbo i don't work for peanuts <laughs> and and so they decided to get a little person in a suit and then brought the little person to a meeting with the director and was like, meet your monkey. <laughs> and he got to meet the monkeys. And then they they ripped him to shreds. So they had to get another <laughs> little person. <laughs> and they said, don't show him to the monkeys this time. Right? <laughs> so this monkey, this person, uh, was played by Deep Roy. Not just any little person, right. really. Like, one of the most famous ones out there in, in Hollywood besides, like, Vern Troyer. Agreed. And Warwick Davis. Mm -hmm. uh, he was every single Oompa Loompa in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. He was uh, Teeny Weeny uh, in The, <laughs> the Never, Never Ending Story, Story, which I totally forgot about that. He's uh, he's the one that, like, rides the, the giant oversized snail. And he is an alumni of this show. Uh, dating all the way back to my first official episode, F official episode mm -hmm. on the show, because mm -hmm. he is the hitchhiking ghost Gus in the Haunted Mansion. That's right. Yeah. So he's he's got a prolific ass career. <laughs> yeah. 
Yep. I mean, you got to start somewhere. And here we are right here with Bonzo. (laughs) (laughs) So Bonzo, we're just going to call him. They don't call him Bonzo until halfway through the film. But just for reference, Bonzo here uh, jumps over from branch to branch and then gets stuck in a branch. And 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 Benjamin is like or Ben is like, we got to save him. I'm like, dude, he's a fucking monkey. Like, he'll be good. (laughs) <laughs> right? he does this every day <laughs> so uh, Benjamin gets on top of Moe's shoulders and this is the weird part where Moe starts calling him Master Ben and I didn't like that too much I didn't like that either <laughs> I don't like the insinuation there <laughs> right now you're a servant to the senator's child not liking it but also he keeps I, I had it. to look this up because I was trying to remember if this was true or not Bonzo is the name of the chimp from that Ronald Reagan movie, Bedtime for Bonzo. Mm -hmm. Okay, (laughs) yep. Go ahead and add that to your list of of things. (laughs) That's only going to help me in the end of this episode, okay? Oh, no. So, uh, yeah, they cut Bonzo down, and then uh, Bonzo is just messing with Dom DeLuise. It's not really important, (laughs) but uh, there is a point where... Uh, Don DeLuise is tired of uh, Bonzo's shenanigans where he steals an apple from him. He steals a banana from him uh, without him knowing what's going on, uh, like later on in the film. Uh, So, like, I can see where this will all add up, but this escalates way too quickly where he pulls a gun on him. Yeah, right? And at first I was like, okay, wait, because like he pulls a gun on him. He pulls a gun on the elephant earlier in the scene when he was having lunch. And I was like, uh, okay, he definitely should be looked into for animal cruelty. But then when you see Bonzo's face, you're like, oh, no, he knows something we don't kill it. <laughs> <laughs> he is too knowledgeable because <laughs> Bonzo's face in this film, like I said, they got the bot, the butt right. But its face is just all messed up. It's fucked up. I hate it. And another thing is so that they let Deep Roy walk on his knuckles. They do the exact same thing where they they put like stilt for your hands, right? Yeah, they gave him like uh, uh, the long hands. Right. (laughs) Yeah. But they never change out the long hands when Bonzo's just like having a one-on-one and like hugs the boy or anything. It looks looks horrible. (laughs) They're like, we only have enough money for the stilt hands. We can't like actually have you have opposable thumbs. Uh, Then you would take over. uh, So... So Bonzo hides like on the roof of the of the uh, safari wagon and they pull up to those game lords and um, and then Bonzo starts hitting the game lord on the head and it's Who back and forth. pulls a gun on him. Yeah. Who pulls a gun on Tom <laughs> DeLuise. <laughs> right. But I mean, because he thinks that Don DeLuise hit him over the head. And so like Bonzo keeps hitting him on the head and then Bonzo keeps honking the horn and so he pulls the gun on the kid and it just is this weird Abbott and Costello ripoff that really goes nowhere until they're like, wait a minute, you tried to smuggle a monkey when when the monkey gets revealed and they all get arrested. Even yeah. the monkey. Yeah, they're like, monkey, you're under arrest for being <laughs> smuggled. You're under arrest for shenanigans. That would be like if you were rescued from being kidnapped, and when you came out, the cops shot you. <laughs> it's like, damn. Being kidnapped is against the law. <laughs> yeah, so they all get arrested, and the thing that we haven't discussed yet is the uh the interactions between our main captain the nazi guy that we talked about <laughs> our quote-unquote villain right they're, they're they these people have one function to be evil and then <laughs> and they'll also only be in the movie for 15 minutes tops yeah i mean <laughs> basically like like any police force just evil (laughs) this movie this movie is like all right guys we've only our budget we've only got evil doing we can only shoot 15 minutes sir this is an hour and 30 minute movie what are we gonna do with the other hour 15 monkey shenanigans (laughs) (laughs) it's like oh we're in (laughs) Um, so captain mcintosh is uh you know the head of the police force here in um in a tongue Tongola, and he also interacts with a, a, a circus uh, 
owner named Palermo, played by Which War- is- Warren Berlinger. What I really like about this is that not only do they paint the cops in an evil, corruptible way, which is incredibly accurate, they also depict circus owners as evil, despicable people I as well, like that. which is completely <laughs> accurate. <laughs> Maybe we can rewrite the stars. No, that's not how it goes. <laughs> and also, interestingly enough, in this movie set in Africa with tons of casual racism, the villains are white, so wow, we, <laughs> this movie's really hitting it. And and every sing, actually, the entire police force and Dom DeLuise are all wearing pith hats. And if you know your history about pith hats, which uh, Carlos, uh, our uh, a listener, was actually able to inform me a lot more on it, it's hella racist. Are they? I didn't know <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, I didn't either. Like, I just always wanted one every time I was in Adventureland, well, uh, but only to wear for that like five hundred foot walk through Adventureland. So there's there's different styles, but like the style that uh, the police force is wearing is the one that like is really definitely associated with like colonialism and like all that shit. Well, know? yeah, that's what the English would wear, pit yeah, helmets and everything like that. Yeah, Oof. so whoops <laughs> what is this like the way that you're gonna it's the uh indiana jones and the last crusade way of saying that someone's a bad guy <laughs> instead of exactly. pinning like a carnation on them they're wearing those helmets <laughs> well even even dark helmet wears an oversized one yes <laughs> 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 um so yes everybody actually except for the captain is is wearing one of these hats in the film and and so our two main bad guys aren't wearing it but his entire force is and everyone around him and dom de Luis. Yeah. so that's enough and and the, the, he agrees the captain agrees that if he finds uh palermo a uh, literally does say talking monkey he's like i need something big something huge you know and and names a bunch of animals that he would like for his circus and he's like i i will give you a bribe and, and no he he offers him money to which nazi cop says we don't accept tips, tips. around here yes. and then he's like no it's a bribe and he's like oh in that case That's and he different. takes some money <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i was like ah, you know I get really mad when a shitty movie like this makes me laugh genuinely. <laughs> like, like I laugh at something that was meant to be laughed. Yes, at. yes, I, I will, I will agree with you. There, there's one or two moments like that, but they are so far between. Yes, the rest of it is laughing at at unfortunate things that they definitely did not intend to be funny. No, uh, so they. Everybody that was arrested gets taken into the captain's office, and he realizes. Uh, through monkey shenanigans uh, as the monkey tears up the entire room and nobody can seem to catch it which I'm like Jesus Christ there's like seven people in this room right now I don't know why it's so hard to catch this fi- this this monkey that's not ripping anybody's face off so it's Dude, it's not like it's violent God imagine the R-rated cut of this film where Bonzo rips someone's lips off of their face <laughs> just grabs his like <laughs> And just rips their whole and they're they're like ah and he starts like going on a rampage and now that would be a movie I would pay to see and then like uh, they just turn to the camera and go ladies and gentlemen going bananas <laughs> <laughs> wow that monkey's really going bananas <laughs> the credits start rolling <laughs> uh, and uh, so nobody can get a hold of the monkey but then he kind of the captain kind of realizes that oh shit uh, this monkey is talented. But I don't see how. Uh, yeah, he, it's almost as if he has a sixth sense where he can see the plot and knows that the monkey is going to talk eventually. Mm-hmm. Because this is just a chimpanzee, as far as you know. Right. And he's like, yeah, that one can talk. I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Their assholes look like that when they can talk. <laughs> yeah, I, I totally, I totally agree. Um, so they, they all are sent on their way when he realizes that it can talk. Now, um, there is something that 
I, I just want to touch on for a second. I know that we kind of glossed over it, but the dentist scene. Can we go back to that for a second? I totally missed it, and it's worth noting. Yes, uh, this is um, one of the scenes that's actually kind of funny in yeah. this movie and is intentionally funny. I guess while they were still on the reservation <laughs> before that they like were arrested for smuggling Bonzo, um, uh, they wound up chasing a bunch of ostriches like they were in Jurassic Park. And and they crashed into a tree, animals. right? <laughs> yes, they crash into a tree, and it knocks out Dom DeLuise's tooth. Yes, and and so he's like, "I need a dentist," and uh, and I guess Mo. Mo knows where a dentist is. No, not just knows this. He says, "My uncle is a dentist, not too far from here, in the park." Yeah, well, it's a tr okay because they take him to a tribe, you guys. The same tribe that um, that Ace Ventura will meet in a few <laughs> years when his second film comes out. Bumblebee tuna, Bumblebee tuna, <laughs> guano. <laughs> They've got guano. But yes, so he um, he they go to this tribal dentist. Okay, who. Oh my god. He's going to he's going to drill his tooth with the driller killer's drill <laughs> from, from that movie. It's a like a gig gigantic like stone carved drill. It's, it's a it's a cement drill. Yes. <laughs> and it it's being spun and powered by a woman that's like on a bicycle that's all attached to belts and pulleys. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's weird because this scene is not only funny it has good sight gags and it's the like everything around it is is well done that it g genuinely is a scene that like stands out from the film in not a good way and this like, is this is it's exactly good, but it looks odd yes it doesn't fit with the rest of it it feels like it, it was written in a different portion of the film where, because yes, it is a complete sidestep and a pointless thing that never comes back. His tooth being hurt or fixed or, you know, one way or the other does not affect the rest of this movie whatsoever. No. So it's a full on sidestep that they were like, we need to pad this out. And they actually padded it out with something funny. And yeah. th that's what triggered me needing to go back to this because I was like, oh, yeah, it's really funny where where Don DeLuise sits down and he's like, oh, ooh, has has he ever done this before? And he's like, don't worry, he's fixed the entire village's teeth. And he looks over and the entire village is watching this operation and, yes. and they all smile at him and they're missing tons of teeth <laughs> <laughs> and they all just laugh at him. It's so good. Yeah, it's just like, <laughs> all right. It's a very honest. Honestly, it's a very Ace Ventura 2 moment. Yes. That's that's really what it feels like. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Down to he he goes, ah, ah, I need Novocaine. And and they just shoot a, a dart, dart, dart into his neck. Just like who he's like, three darts is too much. Yes. <laughs> yes. And yes, he gets it shot into his neck, he passes out, and I guess his tooth was fixed. But looking at it, it definitely is not. It's gone. They like ripped it out. <laughs> like the rest of it, because there's like a big black space there now. Yep. But the, it won't matter after that. Like the, it never comes back. So back to the, they they were arrested and then they were released, uh, but they weren't allowed to take Bonzo with them because uh, the captain is going to uh, sell it to Palermo. Yeah. And then at this point, I. I had to sit there and and try to understand why, as as the crew is now hungry, why there's a French restaurant in the middle of Africa. Well, the French colonized Africa. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> but like, why is it so fancy? Like, what is this place? Like, it, 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 I don't understand. Like they're talking French, they're it. It seems like it's only that fancy so that monkey shenanigans can destroy their uppity place. I mean that is true, but yes, France did conquer portions of Africa. God damn it, <laughs> as they did most of the world. <laughs> okay, so it just felt way too fancy, uh, and so they they go into this restaurant and they're like, wait a minute. 
uh, Bonzo's here right before they go in. Bonzo somehow escaped, but they don't show us how he escaped. No, dude, he's just a master of, like, getting out, apparently. Uh, getting out of what? Like, he should have been in a cage or something, but the only... He was only... like, I was actually in a monkey prison. I just slipped the guard a <laughs> banana and I was out. <laughs> they only... Oh, man. Uh, he was able to actually reach the dog with the key in his mouth. Yeah, because he has those long ass arms. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and uh, I don't know, but they don't show it. They they literally cut from him being like, Palermo, I got a monkey for you. Click. Right? To outside Dom DeLuise being like, I'm so hungry. And let's find a restaurant to, oh, my God, look, it's Bonzo. And he must have escaped because there's a rope around his neck. And yeah. that's it. That's all and you the, get. <laughs> and then the worst atrocity that this film commits is next, where they're like, oh, we still want to go to this restaurant. All right, Bonzo, you're a girl now. Okay, <laughs> what the hell, man? <laughs> they dress him up in this, like, pink, like, dress with a, uh, like, a lace uh, veil on it to hide his face. And they take him to a restaurant. And I'm sorry, these people may be French, but they live in Africa. <laughs> They've seen a chimpanzee before. <laughs> that that guy's just down with the fact that these people are eating at his table with a chimpanzee trying to pass it off as their grandma. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, if I was like, hello, welcome to a vous vous or whatever, and then I was like, oh, fuck, a monkey. Okay. <laughs> I'd be like, keep it cool, man. Keep it cool. You, know, I guess it could you be, don't want your rip, your lips ripped off. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, but also, I'd be like, this could be like one of the coolest experiences of your life. <laughs> <laughs> this is when you go in the back and you're like, you guys, my 27 has a fucking monkey in a dress at it. <laughs> seriously like um uh, i'll be like i swear to god if they say that there's a hair in their food <laughs> i don't think i'm gonna be able to hold it together you guys uh, don't fuck up the order for 27 i think they will fling shit at me if it's wrong <laughs> right uh god i really really hope that uh the monkey's not in drag i really hope it's a female under there because that would just be wrong <laughs> comes back up he's like you know what is this how you guys get your sick kicks? You bring your little man sex slave with you, and then you pick up a monkey and dress it up in a dress? You're fucking disgusting. Is this how you get your kicks? Little people furries? <laughs> <laughs> That's disgusting, and I'm French, so I would know. Wee <laughs> wee. <Oui, oui. laughs> um, but yes, this is when... Uh, another scene of fucking monkey shenanigans ensues. Because the, the, the group here is to believe that there is selective monkey recognition, where uh, they have this monkey dressed up in, in a like an American girl doll, and <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, with a shawl over its face, and and the waiter's asking it for what it wants to eat, and it's just like <laughs> right. And and, and you're like, okay, clearly that's monkey noise, guy. <laughs> like that's fucking monkey noise, because because they're like, oh yeah, he's 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 speaking a different language, and he's like, oh, uh, voulez vous uh, français? I can't do it, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and they're like, yeah, yeah, he said the, uh, she says that she wants the wine list, and he's like, yeah, totally for sure, right? We don't have banana wine. <laughs> <laughs> right, I, at least that would have been funny if the boy would have been like, he says. Do you have um, banana smoothies? Uh, that would have been at least cute on a kid level. You yeah. Know? But no, do you have a wine list? The monkey's like, yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> I'm about to get fucked up. I don't love wine. <laughs> <laughs> Because he already Wine sounds drunk like a drunk. Bonzo. <laughs> well, he already sounds like a drunk every time he talks. Banana. Uh. banana. <laughs> Don't tell me when I've had enough. <laughs> I'll tell you when I had a fucking enough. You wanted to dress me like a girl. Now I'm white girl wasted. <laughs> <laughs> Bring me a white claw. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, yes, the, the waiter doesn't recognize him, but then the captain and Palermo walk into the same restaurant. Restaurant and they're like, oh shit, hide him under the table. <laughs> they're like, oh shit, monkey in a dress. <laughs> so Bonzo goes under the table, but then he makes his way to Palermo and the captain's table. And then we do the same bit that we did to Dom De Louise when he was under uh, Novocaine, like waking up from it and thought that his apple and his banana were being taken, for, you know, or just that he they didn't exist. 
Um, and they do the exact same thing here now with cake. And the waiter keeps placing the cake down, and Bonzo will grab it from under the table until they're like, yeah, where's my cake? Do you know what was the most shocking portion of this movie right here yeah. for me? Was that I paused it to go to the bathroom and noticed I was only 30 minutes into this film. Yeah. And I had a whole nother hour of this nonsense. Because this genuinely feels like the wrapping up point of the story. Yes. So more that they discover that Bonzo's under the table, more monkey chaos ensues. But it's like a really lazy choreographed bar fight. Yeah, it's the honestly for a movie that relies heavily on monkey shenanigans, the monkey shenanigans in this film suck. They do. The monkey doesn't do much compared to like so I think Don DeLuise breaks three bottles over people's heads. Um uh Don DeLuise takes his his weight and does a springboard catapult to somebody like there's a table that is like seesawing and, and some guy is standing on that and he launches that guy out a window. I think another guy gets thrown out the window by Jimmy Walker and the monkey the whole time is just spinning around on a fan. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, it's it's weird because you're like, I, I want to have fun with this movie and you just can't the no. whole time. I and then uh, I was miserable every single time that I watched this movie, and I had to watch it two and a half times. Uh, and <laughs> if you guys were if you guys were thinking, ah oh, man, I hope they make another Disneyland reference. Buckle up, because they get they get arrested and thrown into what very clearly looks like it just looks like the ending of Pirates of the Caribbean when you go through the prison again. Though, why did they arrest the monkey? <laughs> the monkey is in this cell with them <laughs> you're responsible for a lot of property damage buddy <laughs> just wait till tomorrow when you're publicly hanged <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> uh, so in this time i guess our people go crazy yeah i i'm i don't know because <sighs> now they are determined to try to get bonzo to say the word banana as if they do believe that a monkey can can talk and where this thought process even came from i have no idea yeah I, I, it, the kid kept saying earlier in the film when they were like escaping well when they were leaving the the nature reserve mm -hmm. right he kept saying that bonzo was trying to say something to them that he felt like Bonzo could talk. Right. And I'm like, what did everyone all of a sudden just share this kid's psychosis? Yeah. And be like, yeah, the monkey can talk. Because, uh, yeah, I do remember that as well, but that should be like, oh, yeah, he is trying to communicate with us. That's cute, kid. You know, that would be the normal way to, to go about this. But all three of them are like, yeah, come on, say it. Say banana. Say banana. As if they know that 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 uh bonzo has been part of like a secret like government experience uh, or experiment to have monkeys talk and they're finally getting it to happen you know Bonzo's like bonzo's like all right you guys fucking caught me okay i'm a little person in a suit okay <laughs> <laughs> i've been roaming around mamba zombo land trying to fuck a monkey i'm sorry <laughs> i've been trying trying to find some honkies gonna take me back to america because you know have you ever watched 90 day fiance it is impossible <laughs> to get in there i guess it was really obvious when i got stuck in a branch that i wasn't a monkey <laughs> <laughs> you got me so banana <laughs> and they're like oh my god he can talk <laughs> very fluently uh so yeah he doesn't say it and everybody goes to bed but then bonzo takes the banana and tries and tries his hardest and winds up saying it himself which forces everybody to be like huh what and wakes up and is like oh do you hear that shit he said it and the whole place is just uproaring and be like he fucking talks <laughs> <laughs> which is the most valid response to that i will have to say but no, i would be scared man have you seen planet of the apes <laughs> okay fair <laughs> <laughs> Quick, Deep Roy is in Planet of the Apes. Hide the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I. It, it. It. You're right. It would be scary. It would be. It. It wouldn't be pleasant. But everybody is stoked, and then 
at this point, we have one of like he's like the main uh henchman. That that one cop. Yeah, who like just laughs out loud. And and is the guy when like he laughs out loud or says something and then the uh the Nazi's like silence the best thing to do is not to yell silence louder. Like and repeat. He goes, Silence yeah. and he goes, Silence <laughs> That's not what you do. You just no. be quiet. Uh, but he comes in and they're able to trick him and I think knock him out, right? Yeah. And and then they escape. But that's not going to matter. It's only going to matter for two of the four people that escape here. Because they immediately go outside and then are surrounded, but not before Benjamin and Bonzo get out. Get out, right? They like... Mo and Joe get caught again. Yep, and it almost and, uh, yeah. Ben and Bonzo are escaping to go have sex capades in the uh, <laughs> Under, in the jungle underneath the wagon. Because remember when I said that uh, that Phoebe Cates and Drop Dead Fred had an uncomfortable relationship? Yeah, I don't like the relationship that this boy and this monkey have. Okay, because that's what I was gonna say. It almost seems like uh, sexual. Joe and Mo <laughs> only got caught, like recaptured and put right back in jail after immediately escaping so that Ben and Bonzo could have their first date. Romeo and Bonziet. <laughs> that's what this movie's <laughs> called. They're like, no one wants us to be in love, Bonzo, <laughs> but I'll I'll die trying. <laughs> Bonzo and Ben, the love story that never could be. Because in these next scenes, where they're in the jungle, it genuinely feels like they're like gonna make like a suicide pact with each other. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they fall asleep with each uh, next to each other underneath this wagon. Where I'm like, yeah, you're being searched for. You should try to pick a less conspicuous place than sleeping directly next to a monkey in the middle of broad day or broad nighttime that will become morning one day underneath a wagon in the middle of the street. And no, no, no. They've they've all seen Todd Browning's Freaks. They know how a, how effective it is to hide under a cart and then surprise them. <laughs> and then they go, and instead of rescuing Joe and Mo, yes, they go on their own little mini adventure where he pays three dollars each to board a fully packed safari bus that's going to Mambazamo Land. So he takes him back to his land, and then proceeds to. Uh, with sweeping violin and romantic type music, swing on vines together and hold hands and have a majestic day at the park. Just, just imagine if uh, this music, the the music from the film Tarzan would have been in this scene. It would have been so much more romantic for the two of them, like the the vines swinging. If it was just like, I wanna know. Can you show me? <laughs> I want to know if there's strangers like me. <laughs> and then they share an embrace and they kiss. <laughs> You'll be in my <laughs> yeah. heart. Believe me. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, because they really do have this. They're trying to force this bond hardcore. And... They run into each other and Ben falls down this crevice and then I guess like falls in what I didn't know existed, a scorpion nest. Yeah, yeah. We I didn't know that um, Indiana Jones was uh, going to need to fall into this 30 minutes later. So they just had to make sure that it's stocked with five different types of scorpions <laughs> that definitely would just kill each other on site. But OK. <laughs> and they... Uh, I guess because it's not established because Ben never moves after the fall, right? So it, we, we never see that like he's like he tries to stand up and his legs hurt or anything. He just doesn't move. And then the scorpions continue to crawl on him, up his shirt sleeve, like all over him. And he never moves, just screams for Bonzo's help. What if Bonzo was just like, finally, <laughs> fuck, and just left and let him die in that pit? Or just like a monkey should be, just, y you're right, just kind of freaks out and watches him get stung to death. And he's like, oh, nice, a meal. As, he, <laughs> as he's just up there, just going, because ah, 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 ah! <laughs> that's what would really happen. Like, even if he cared about the boy, he'd just be like, ah! <laughs> and that would be it. Like, that's kind of what happens honestly a little bit but but then 
Ponzo is like, I'm going to grab a vine. I'm going to climb down. I'm going to sweep. I'm, okay. I, you know how we were talking about, uh, you know, the low budget of this film? I'm pretty sure they actually killed these scorpions. I think they did too. Because uh, Bonzo or Deep Roy comes in and just uses his uh, stilt hand to just smash the shit out of these scorpions. You know, I've always wondered about, you know, you have lots of lots of steps on a film to make sure that you don't harm animals. Mm-hmm. You know, does anyone really give a shit if you kill a bug okay. in a movie? I, because I read, I read a very interesting piece of trivia about one of my favorite movies, um, What's Eating Gilbert Grape. And there's a scene in that where Leonardo DiCaprio um, closes a mailbox on a grasshopper and kills it. And there was literally an animal rights person there to make sure that they didn't harm the grasshopper. Mm-hmm. And he did kill it. He actually did crush it and kill it. <laughs> and the person was like, yeah, whatever. Like, he didn't, <laughs> They're like, are you the shit. animal handler? Well, you're fucking fired. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I tend to agree with you because one that comes to mind for me, for sure, is, and it's a big, you know, mainstream film, uh, was Temple of Doom. With the whole bug scene where Willie has to, like, step on bugs. Now, I'm sure not all those were bugs, but you mean to tell me that not one bug was smushed in the creation of Temple of Doom? Yeah. Oh, come on. It, it, it makes me... I'm, I'm, I've become a very um, active person in the bug rights movement <laughs> um, for many years now, quite... Because of, a, of an incident I had at my old job where I was building a manger... Um, for a nativity scene and I was putting hay on top of it and I was spraying spray glue and I managed to catch a bee in the stream of spray glue mm-hmm. and then I watched as it slowly died in front of me for five minutes and I like will not kill bugs now because <laughs> I was like that was a life I just took yeah <laughs> you, <laughs> I, 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 I am right there with you uh, I was laying in bed last night a spider was like hey I'm gonna come down now and it was like <laughs> Uh, I don't I don't like that. <laughs> but I also didn't want to kill him, so uh we took his web from above him and he kept like spitting out web trying to get further and further down as we like walked him out the door. <laughs> you'll be safe out here spider and then he gets eaten by like a bird yeah right (laughs) because that's the joke i made where he's like fuck i don't know how to get back in my home is in there just because my kids my fucking kids (laughs) just because he doesn't see where i live in his room doesn't mean i don't live there (laughs) i thought they were putting a rent freeze during this quarantine and now i'm being evicted Spiders go home, (laughs) (laughs) which is everywhere. Come on. Yeah. Um, So uh, now uh, speaking of bugs, like we said, he just smashes these scorpions and then uh, I guess he's able to take Benjamin's body weight and his own and he pulls he climbs up the rope and then pulls Benjamin up the rope Benjamin's tied to the end of the rope what yeah I I was who tied the knot (laughs) (laughs) the monkey that's the bigger feat here he not that he can speak is that he knows how to tie well that's I mean when we get to the end of the movie like his his evolution throughout 90 minutes is insanity yeah, it's actually haunting. <laughs> it's quite scary. He's tied a rope around Benjamin's um, his waist, and he pulls him up. And then, because it still hasn't explained, and it never will exactly why Benjamin can't walk or anything, you just have to, I guess, assume the scorpions got it. Well, okay, because what happens is Bonzo saves him, and then... Um, Mo, Dom DeLuise yeah, and Mo show up and th- to because they were broken him. out by yeah. I guess the consulate came by Gon by Gonzo um <laughs> Bonzo's uh tap dancing brother no he can't talk but he can tap dance which isn't helpful to the circus unfortunately <laughs> um he, he, <laughs> Gonzo <laughs> he likes yes, chickens they, and then Bonzo's like <laughs> And they're like, oh my god, okay, and they take him to a hospital, and the, and the nun at the hospital is just like, this'll fix him. Yeah. And like, hooks him up to an IV. But Don DeLuise is like, oh, ah, uh, what is it? Is it malaria? What is it? And they never answer him. 
Exactly. Yeah. Nobody. He's like, oh, is it malaria? And then he looks at Mo and he goes, sorry. He's like, damn. <laughs> I don't think anyone else thought you were being racist, but you just outed yourself. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Mo and Joe went to the... Somehow they also knew that Bonzo and Ben were at the... Uh, back at the Mamba Zamba land. There was like, that's... that's um, that's Bonzo's fuck den. We need to go back. <laughs> we can't let him take advantage of another child. <laughs> <laughs> I can't have this happen on my watch again. <laughs> Master Ben, we have to have a talk. <laughs> uh, Bonzo doesn't want to be your friend. He wants to be your mate. <laughs> but no, they do go into Mamba Zamba land and they did find him there uh, just by pure luck. Uh, and uh, they did take him to the hospital with the nun. And then this is where we get pretty much the scene the scene that most people would even know anything about this film the scene that was played on electric boogaloo bonzo decides to wait until everybody is out of the room because he needs to have a private moment with ben now ben is sick he can't talk he's under this this shroud you know because you know the make, a malaria now. yeah make people better shroud you know, <laughs> uh, you know, like that privacy shroud. I don't know that cheesecloth. And I told you it's a malaria net. Is it really that? I yes. know. <laughs> I don't know. It's so that mosquitoes don't get in and, and eat you up and then you get malaria. Got it. OK. I, I just thought it was on like every like 14 year old teenage girl with a canopy bed. It is that too. <laughs> so um, Ponzo comes in. He lifts the net and then he proceeds to embrace Ben's face. Ben is sleeping and then straight up makes out with him. It starts fucking. Yeah. Him. It's really yeah, gross. No. <laughs> but he does. I'm just going to play the clip because I, we finally need the people to hear Bonzo's voice and how disturbing it is. Bonzo love <laughs> Yeah, um, he sounds like a reject gremlin. <laughs> it. Thank you so much because I I had to I I had it in my brain to tell you. I was curious if Howie Mandel just did the voices here too. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't. It sound like a Howie Mandel it voice. It does. It's it, it chalk it up to another thing that it would be right there within that same like time period that I'm pretty sure we knew what you were imitating. Yeah, without a doubt. Gotcha, Cannon again. <laughs> so, yeah, busted once again, like every single time. I think what's creepier about this is the singing, the la la la, <laughs> which does make it another like Gremlin ripoff. Yeah, it's the singing, but uh, it's it's the lullaby that he's trying to give to Ben to comfort him. It it. it it's so disturbing that the monkey knows that Ben is sick to begin with and all this stuff, right? They're giving him so much intelligence that you're like, I don't know how far this is going to go. <laughs> <laughs> Bonds on love, Ben. Opens a ring box. <laughs> Not like a friend. <laughs> Will you marry me? <laughs> Sorry, Bonzo. I really do see you like a friend. Fuck. Starts ripping his lips off. <laughs> <laughs> and... So Bonzo hears a whole bunch of more. It's the captain. He's come in uh, for some reason. Uh, that's right. There is one random guy who happens to tip off the captain being like, the monkey is here. And you're like, who are you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you, Indiana Jones villain one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Later, he's going to put dates in Bonzo's like food. Thank, thank you, um, Indiana Jones bizarre scene extra <laughs> thank you uh thank you alien that sells the the sand speeder <laughs> <laughs> um and so yes this guy tips off the captain the captain gets to the mission and and he proceeds to steal the monkey Straight up is just like, that's our monkey now. Uh, not before a little bit of shenanigans, but this time they do indeed capture the monkey and they sell it to the circus uh, manager, Palermo. 
Uh, then we get to our third act. And and it, I, I cannot believe that this and all the circus stuff now, I promise you, is like a 15 minute sequence. Yeah. And it just keeps going on and on. So th- they do not know that Bonzo was captured again. Uh, yeah. And they're like, it's such a weird way of getting them to see that he's captured. They're like, oh, Ben, you've been through a lot. Let's go to the circus. Yeah, the circus just out of nowhere is like marching down the streets of uh, Tongala. And they're like, oh, what? What's going on? Why are there so many white people in the same place? <laughs> because they, it's just a bunch of white women twirling batons <laughs> just walking down the street. <laughs> and, and people are amazed and they're just like flocking to this, this circus. And they go in and then uh, the cat in the hat comes out. Uh, Palermo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with that fucking stupid outfit And on. he proceeds to... Uh, I don't understand this circus at all. Like I said, they had a full parade, and then they brought all the people in, and then they just proceed to do all the acts at kind of the same time. Yeah, I, I'm like, where am I supposed to look? I, I That's how I would <clears throat> feel as an audience member. But Joe... <laughs> it's like, all right, you know what, you guys? This circus is a fucking bullshit. Get everyone out. Bring, bring the, the, the cage of doom. I want to see the motorcycles roll. I out. totally would love to see the motorcycles <laughs> roll. I, because, okay, did you ever go to the circus as a kid? I've been to Ringling Brothers once. Okay. Uh, I went a couple times as a kid. I think I went once as an adult right before they uh, uh, they shut down. Uh, just, just because I was like, you know what? This is going away, and it was part of my childhood. What's it like as an adult? As an adult, it was rough. So <laughs> My favorite thing that I remember from seeing the circus, right, was that the elephants kept pissing and shitting all over the <laughs> yes. place during their thing where they were, like, coming out and doing stuff. <laughs> yes, absolutely. But what triggered the memory for me, when you said the motorcycles in the cage, it was literally when the humans would do shit. I was like, this is how the circus could survive, you know? Yeah. Um, it was every single time that they, like, forced the animals to do something, I was like... Not cool, guys. Speaking of the circus, um, my dad just gave me his old VHS tape of the Jim Rose Circus, oh, which is an old freak show. So <laughs> we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to watch that okay. together sometime. <laughs> so uh, Joe and and Ben and Mo, for some reason, I don't know why Mo is still with these people. They're like, we like you, Mo. You can stick right, around. Right, because I thought he was just hired to be the safari tour guide. Now he's like on the full adventure with them for no reason, unless he was hired to be a guide to, of Tangala. Then Maybe. that's the only thing I can think of. Like, But also, I'd be like, guys, you hired me to be a guide and you want to see a fucking circus? <laughs> you guys literally just saw these animals in the wild. Now you want to see them in a circus? Yes, thank you. That's another great point is that why did these two things coexist in the same city? I don't feel like they would. No. So they are watching the circus and out comes Bonzo. Yep. In a and, uh, in a very very unfortunate like presentation where he has uh men in loincloths um yeah come out which is a weird if if this movie was smarter i would say they're making a commentary on something but they're not no nope. <laughs> it was just really racist all around yes yes and so they come out they drop off bonzo he keeps forcing him to say uh different words and by crack of whip bonzo knows every single word that like he has to repeat like no problem he's like you're gonna count to ten. One, and he's like one and he's like two two and you're like jesus christ the comprehension here is just on point for this animal by the crack of the whip you will perform bohemian rhapsody in its entirety <laughs> <laughs> Mama, just kill the man. <laughs> do i have to do both parts <laughs> all of it <laughs> but I can't, I can't. <laughs> so this is when um magnifico baby go no, ben we will not sees... let you go <laughs> that would be sick actually that would make this scene so much better yep 
Um, ben sees him and he's like, oh no, Bonzo. He starts crying. And, and this is when they're like. he's freaking out for something he's met for like 24 hours. <laughs> and he's like, we gotta bust him out. The biggest tears I've ever seen. And But also you're like, uh, I, I guess you know it's Bonzo because it talks. But at this point, I'd be like, how do you know it's Bonzo? Maybe all monkeys fucking talk around here. <laughs> like, we, uh, like we've seen some crazy shit today like you don't know it's him at this how many animals have you talked to huh <laughs> zero yeah they all talk here idiot yeah, right welcome to mamba zombo land they all talk that's gonzo he learned how to talk and he can tap dance <laughs> that awesome that would be awesome <laughs> and, and so he's like we gotta save him so they go and they dress up like clowns and s- okay hold on yeah they were about to commit a sexual crime against these clowns. They hold all three of them, including the child, hold these clowns at gunpoint and say, take off your pants. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> they are fully prepared to shoot someone over a monkey that they just met that is now legally somebody else's property. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like uh, I'm, I'm. I'm very confused. But also, why'd you have to treat the clowns like that? I know. <laughs> Take off your goddamn pants. They're like, oh my god! I really thought that big one was gonna t- do a lot worse than that. <laughs> Jesus Christ! We got off easy. <laughs> we'll clown around later. <laughs> uh, yeah, they all dress up like clowns, and then they go back in, and somehow I guess they uh, they got the clowns to teach them their entire routine. Yeah, I guess <laughs> because they know all the clown gimmicks. They know how uh, they know where the props are and how to fake out the audience with like trying to throw water at a out of a bucket and it's confetti. Classic clown stuff, guys. But not sure how you were like. Yeah, we know how to do it, and nobody's questioning it. Not a single other person is questioning this. Not Palermo, like as if he. This is the first time he's ever actually stayed for an entire performance himself. <laughs> He's like, I always leave during the clowns. That's when I go to the bathroom. <laughs> That's what most so, people do. There's monkey clown uh, shenanigans but not ensue. Really. Hold on. It's just clown shenanigans. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of clown because, shenanigans. Because Bonzo has been uh, chained by the neck uh, to, a, you know, to a chain. And the key to that chain is on the bodybuilders who are um, now climbing up the ropes and up to the trapeze artist. So there's no real monkey shenanigans in this. And that's the weird part. Bonzo is just stuck to a chain while our heroes in clown drag... Uh, <laughs> yeah. because because Don always definitely just looks like somebody in drag <laughs> in this moment. He does. Um, and they, they they go up and try to get the key, the key, and this is where the trapeze artist somehow are like, yeah, now the clowns are part of the act too. No questioning whatsoever yeah. because it's it's just trapeze artists grabbing people's hands and swinging them from place to place hitting them on the trampoline like they know the whole thing and it's all just a bid to get the key away from the bodybuilders which of course they do uh they go and unlock bonzo no no no, no. hold on what? this isn't that this is the whole I miss thing something? of the e- the evolution of bonzo they throw the key to him and he is able to put the key in the lock and unlock it himself. Oh. Which is like, what the fuck? I thought we this? were past that evolution because of tying ropes. But it's like, <laughs> don't bring this monkey back to America. He is going to fuck some shit up. <laughs> it's, he's too smart. You're right. He's absolutely too smart. He will bring the destruction of mankind. That's why Don DeLuise pointed a gun at him in the first place. <laughs> am, I, yeah. am I wrong? <laughs> he was like, he's too smart. Pop him. <laughs> oh, no. He's going to kill us all. <laughs> and yeah, he throws the key to him. And then I don't know what happens, but uh, this has never happened in any circus that I've been at. But every single person in the audience rushes the crowd like they just run, won the pennant at the circus. Jeez. What? I don't I don't know. Everybody rushes to the center as if they were like, that was the best fucking circus I've ever seen. Let's riot. And they all run out the door. Same. And that's why they can't catch Bonzo and the rest of the group is because everybody runs out the tent like insanity. And then 
they see an airplane because of course there's just an airplane this is the i i looked away for a moment and came back and i genuinely thought bonzo was flying the airplane uh um tyler he was Oh no! Do you, oh my god! Do you not know what seat is the pilot seat in an airplane? Uh, like a uh, wh- what do they call these? By a biplane? biplane? Yeah, you know it's the back seat, right? Oh my god! He was flying the airplane. He was. You didn't know? Oh my god! Don't let th- this monkey caused nine eleven. <laughs> <laughs> he is he was the pilot no he was the organizer that's how smart he is <laughs> oh my god uh, no but he uh, bonzo gets in the in the in the pilot seat and then uh the passenger seat which is always the front seat is where benjamin gets in and then we have two full-grown adult males who just get on either wing as it takes off and you're like wait what we let the monkey fly when there's two full-grown adult men who could have, one, flown, and two, at least had a, a, a real seat, you know? No, dude, they don't know They don't know how to fly a plane. I though. guess not. <laughs> Bonzo does, okay, though, because he's, he's an international terrorist. This is the point where, at least, if I was Dom DeLuise, I would have improv the line where I've been like, what do you teach those those the 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 apes at uh, Mambo Zambo Land or something, you know, like what? Yeah. Like, what the hell? There's no questioning it. They just get in and go. They take off, and then they're being chased by the um uh like the the, uh, the Palermo and Captain Macintosh, and they're in like a Dukes of Hazard ripoff vehicle, a Pontiac GTO convertible. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, really? with like American flag stars on the side of yeah, it. Yeah, not exactly the Confederate flag because it's got yellow in it. Yes, uh, in the paint job, but like, yeah, it's definitely like a kind of circus scheme, or uh, it's got stars and stuff like that. But they chase them and they take off and they get away, and then somehow, somewhere, they land close to the African Queen. I don't know where their landing strip was but that boat pulls up directly next i mean the plane pulls up directly next to the boat yeah yeah they're just like all right just landed on the boat it's cool and then um there's there's another part in which we get two endings of this film because everybody says their goodbyes and like it's supposed to be sad and we can't bring bonzo with us and uh which is the right thing to to say Yes. Right. Is no, I'm sorry. You got to take him back to the safari park. That's where he belongs. And then Palermo and the captain come and and they don't get off the boat. Joe and Mo don't get off the boat. This is now Bonzo's moment, I guess, (laughs) (laughs) because they're chasing him around the square in the car. And I was like, oh, gee, I wonder if they're going to destroy a beautiful GTO by having it fall into the water. Because yep. they do. they do. And then this is when Bonzo also flies again. <laughs> he jumps 45 feet to the African queen. Just swan dives over from from the shore to the to African queen. And everybody is okay with now Bonzo going. I guess just because they're like, yeah, these guys are going to keep coming back after they get out of the water. Yeah, <laughs> and they go. We're off to America, and then the film fades out. It freeze frames actually on like Bonzo and Ben hugging, and then the tri- the, the the fucking uh, credits roll over it. End movie. Uh, so remember how I said that I had something to tell you, something like like that would correlate to a lot of the things that you saw today i'm ready for it okay have you ever heard of a film called i've heard of several (laughs) i'm building suspense here (laughs) uh have you ever heard of a film called project x um no No. like the (laughs) x-men no um it's project x it's a film uh from the 80s that was made uh, if I can get my information here, give me one second because it doesn't come up. 
There we go. So Project X was a film made in 1987 starring Matthew Broderick and Helen Hunt. The film plot, I don't want to spoil it because I definitely would love people to actually go out and see this movie. It's a really good movie. But the gist of it is that you have a monkey, right, that is taught by Helen Hunt to speak, but not verbally, sign language, right? Okay. And it's a real chimpanzee, the whole movie. And all the chimpanzees in this are, are, are real. Um, but then they, in the beginning of the movie, she cannot afford the, 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 you know, the grants run out to teach this monkey sign language. So they sell the monkey. They say it's going to go to a zoo. What it actually does, it goes to an Air Force base. And Matthew Broderick is, is appointed to be like a monkey handler in which they are training the monkeys to learn how to fly. <laughs> are you getting it yet <laughs> what they train the monkeys to learn how to fly uh, because what they're doing is eventually they will uh, once the monkey they feel has learned how to fly uh, they will then expose it to radiation to see if during the cold war if the monkey or then a human pilot could get to its destination and still drop its payload after being exposed to radiation on that side Oh my god, Bonzo is Project <laughs> X. So, uh, the the final piece of this puzzle, because I'm not going to spoil how it ends and stuff like that, but I think you can kind of figure it out, honestly, is that like a, a monkey flies a, a real airplane to escape. <laughs> you know? Nice. Um, and what's very interesting about this film is that it was released in April 17th of 1987. Going Bananas was not actually released until February of 1988. So it fits with the six-month turnaround that we told you about in the beginning of the episode. Hmm. That they could have pulled from this, from Indiana Jones, and every other thing that we've referenced here, and that this was the final nail in the coffin. Something that was so relevant, so right there within six months... That Golan Globus could have went to a theater, saw this film, was like, the monkey talks in some way, and it flies an airplane. Get me this. Oh my god. It's my theory, wow. just because I know and love this film, but I truly think that it all adds up. Nice. Yep. So, that's the story of Project X and its correlation to going bananas, guys. I really do recommend you watch Project X. Um, like I said, it's a predictable ending, but it's a damn good movie with real chimpanzees that are pretty fucking cute. Uh, so, check that one out. But when it comes to this film, Tyler, would you recommend it? Um, I'm, I'm going to shock you. I'm going to say yeah. I am shocked. I am uh, completely confused, honestly, because like, I've seen you say no to things. I I'm saw you say, say no to Drop Dead Fred. Yeah, because that would be fucking close. <laughs> um, I actually laughed at this movie, unlike Drop Dead Fred. Um, I would say re I would recommend it if uh, because it's completely free. Like it's on YouTube and I would recommend like watching clips and also if you watch Electric Boogaloo then definitely go and watch this and if you like canon films definitely go and watch this because it has canon stamps all over it. It does. Um, There's definitely better canon films though like way better you know anything Chuck Norris did Evasion USA or um, Alan Quar Quartermain and the Lost City of Gold uh, which are just Indiana Jones ripoffs but hilarious uh yeah there's definitely better canon films i, I i'm gonna have to say i do not recommend i was mm. bored to tears i was really bored to okay let me let me rephrase that i would say look up some of the funniest scenes that we mentioned yeah and then and then that that would be my recommendation yeah i i i agree with that one i'll i'll, I'll put that one out there we'll try to post someone on on instagram or something because no i can't tell you i cannot in good conscience tell you to start this movie start to finish like i, I just yeah. can't like i because i had to do it twice actually you know three and a half times i started it once fell asleep then i did it for the screenings and then i did it because i forgot to take notes during the screenings <laughs> so i had to Damn. uh and so i can't 
No, I can't. Even Tom DeLuise isn't doing enough to save it, and neither is Jimmy Walker. I'm sorry. So what are you giving us on a Jaws scale? This is this is a Jaws four for me. Mm. Absolutely, it's it's not watchable. I'd probably give it a four. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, it's there's there's some funny like shit to it just because of how stupid it is. Okay, but it's 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 yeah. It's almost unwatchable. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, we haven't done a mutual Jaws four in a while. So yeah, God. Uh, that's what we thought about it. But there's still a couple people that we need to hear from, and these people are extremely important to us. The first person on the list is the person that has to sit through these all these movies with Tyler, and that's his wife. This is what did Carly think? So. Carly uh, was watching this with me on her lunch break, and once um, once Bonzo started talking, she was like, I'm fucking out, <laughs> <laughs> and went back to work. <laughs> she was so upset by, Bonzo Love Band. And she was like, I'm done. I can't. I'm, I gotta leave. Because the entire time she kept being like, when is the monkey gonna talk? Because for a movie where a monkey talks, it takes a long time for this monkey to talk. Absolutely. But also when it does talk, it's it's almost as if they had a discussion. They were like, what would a monkey sound like? And they're like, well, if he had vocal cords, then he would probably sound like us. They're like, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> He's like, Bonzo loves Ben. <laughs> I I really really love. Well, I'll say like. I I'm not gonna say love. That's too serious. <laughs> but I like you. I like you. Then it is awkward that are you are here with an older sex man. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't. I I I would have hoped that you liked monkeys, not bears. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa. Um, so, so Carly just was out. She didn't even watch the whole thing. Yeah, with you. as soon as he talked. <laughs> well, you've heard from us. You've heard from Carly. But there's still one extremely important group of people to hear from. At least they like to think so. This is the internet. This is Gimme Five. Five and ten star reviews pulled from the internet, uh, from IMDb and Amazon. What do we got this week? All Amazon or all IMDb? What we got? It's all IMDb. It was very hard to find reviews for this movie. Okay. Tyler finds these reviews. I have no idea what they're going to say, but uh, yeah, let's do this. This one's first written by Novastar underscore six back in 2006, titled Absolutely Hilarious. When my brother and I were little, we had a few movies that we would watch over and over and over again until we had them memorized because as far as we were concerned, they were the best and Going Bananas was definitely one of them. By now, he's outgrown it, but for me, there is no getting past it. I love this movie. Not only is it as enjoyable story of a boy, Ben, touring Africa and making friends with a talking monkey... Who could be more troubled than he's worth sometimes? But it's also hysterical to see the mo monkey pick on Big Bad Joe and get away with it. There's a bit of a graphic scene where Ben gets attacked by scorpions after taking a fall. But aside from that, it's an excellent movie for kids. If you enjoy a good laugh, and there's plenty to be found in this movie, I would highly recommend seeing Going Bananas. Five out of seven people found this review helpful. Ten stars. I just really like that, you know, I like finding those ones occasionally where it's like, oh, this person has a really nice memory latched to this fucking <laughs> terrible film. My brother got over it, but me, it's haunted me for years. <laughs> I think about it every night. Every night in my sleep, Bonzo is there waiting for me at the foot of my bed. <laughs> no, Vasta. <laughs> uh this next one's written by sly back in 2005 titled wowie zowie i must admit i only caught the last five minutes on hbo <laughs> <laughs> but from what i could see it appeared to not only be one of the greatest films cinema has ever borne witness to in all of human history, but the greatest film cinema has ever borne witness to in all of history by about a trillion times the next closest movie. 
I was thoroughly entertained, and I felt a special link to the comedic monkey, his tears, and his triumphs. The classic elements of great cinema were all present. Inept monkey nabbers, emotional drama, boy-slash-monkey love, and of course, a melon-lobbing mon money named Monkey named Bonzo. He misspelled it. <laughs> to reiterate, wowie-zowie, wowie-zowie! Three out of 12 people found this review helpful. 10 out of 10 stars. I think I would have given it 10 out of 10 if I only saw five minutes of it as well. I think that that was a troll review. He yeah, seems just, to know more about the film than what was presented in the last five minutes. I think he went back and watched it. Like, I think he saw the last five minutes and was like, I gotta find this movie. <laughs> and wowie zowie, was I not disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this last one is by DJ Gold underscore 1999, written in 2008, titled People Need to Really Grow Up. I just saw the reviews on Meet the Spartans, The Comebacks, and Superbad. These movies are kind of R-rated, R-like rated movies. R-like rated? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that is. <laughs> they were intended to entertain. I looked up this movie just to see if people with common sense would refer to it as a family cute comedy. But no, again, I'll say it, quote, Tom Hanks isn't in it. His mo his boring movie Big is is a classic and a shrine uh, is a classic and in a shrine. Boring as it was back in the eighties and even now. This is weird. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> okay. This movie caught my attention as a kid due to a main character, a monkey. The movie had a perfect cast. I've gotten my friends started on this movie, and they agree. Wonderful family comedy. Why is everything in quotation marks? <laughs> it's like he's being sarcastic, but I don't think he is. I think he's just quoting his friends. Oh. It, it, it is made in the mid to late 80s. So for a fun, funny, clean-hearted movie, how can any loser, <laughs> loser find anything negative about it? That's right, no Tom Hanks. What? <laughs> <laughs> the same people who have said negative things about each and every good comedy I liked believe that Will, middle-aged Farrell, is funny. That's where you put quotation marks. You just screwed me up. <laughs> Will, quote, middle-aged Farrell is what he should have wrote. Um, uh... So to reiterate, uh, the same people who have said negative things about each and every good comedy I like to believe that Will Middle Age Farrell is funny when he's not funny, but any but annoying looking. His movies are considered good. But why? If you can find this movie on DVD, but but it buy it ASAP. Absolute classic in quotation marks. <laughs> Dude, that was a mouthful, and I don't, I'm not sure. Part of it was me, I think, but other, like, that was confusing. This guy hates fucking Tom Hanks and Will Ferrell so much. He says, the only reason people don't like this movie is because Tom Hanks isn't in it, is what I'm getting from his review. To be fair, I just rewatched The Money Pit the other night, and that's a goddamn classic. Well, yeah. <laughs> but so is Big. What is Big in quotation marks? <laughs> I, per I, I, I like Big, but I really don't like when he squeezed the boobies. <laughs> That's true. He is 13 tops. <laughs> um, uh, oh. Big in quotation marks. Was this written by Deep Roy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. Yep. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in for this episode of Bombs Away. Going Bananas, 1987. What a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much, as always, for listening to us. Um, make sure you are following us on all the social medias. Instagram, Twitter, um, at Bombs Away Show. Twitter, as long as um, this season of Joe Bob's Briggs, 
Joe Bob Briggs' last drive-in is going on. We will be live tweeting it while it is happening. It's a lot of fun. The show is fun itself. If you don't have Shutter, just get it. It's five bucks. Um, but yeah, we're doing that. We're having fun with that. Thank free you. Free promo codes, though. You can still use those free promo codes. Oh yeah, one it try it out right now. Savini is one. Troma is another. Or Shut In. I think they all work. Try them out. I I don't know. I I did Shut In. It worked just fine. Yeah. So, yes, thank you again for joining us for all of that. Join us next week while we cover our next film. Who we we've already watched it, and I'm so fucking excited because I'm it excited. So good. Well, that about does it here for us at Bombs Away. I'm Tyler. I'm Jonathan. And this is the African Queen, but it's not a bucket. It's a ship, and it's my ship, and you can go to hell. <laughs> has been a production of Big Bulb Entertainment, executive produced by Jonathan Young. For more media and information, visit us at www.bigbulbentertainment.com. Big Bulb, what's your bright idea? Shh.